as you already know that these sessions are being organized by uh, uh, you know uh, india international education council and uh, school lalaji solutions india international education council is a not for profit organization which is working in the field of education it has uh, collaborators from 12 countries uh, iaec aims to create a better world for education Uh, it also aims to build quality centers it also aims to build quality centers for elementary education which are approachable for all kids it also tries to find best practices uh, you know uh, uh, best educational practices across the globe and find ways to implement those in indian institutions it also try to create more awareness on hygiene and learning disabilities uh, it publishes a magazine called uh, world education review and uh, many other educational reports it aims to build 100 uh, chapters in different cities by 2022 it will soon open its membership for institutions and individuals it also imparts training uh, to uh, leaders teachers students and parents as i shared in the beginning that uh, so far we have organized 51 session this is our 52nd uh, and i'm very proud to share that uh, in, in these uh, 52 51 sessions we have received 5268 registrations we have also received uh, Uh, four thousand five hundred thirty-nine questions, and we have seen participation from five countries: uh, India, U.S., Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Nepal. And from India, we have seen participation from nineteen states and seventy-six cities. Uh, we aim to organize two hundred sessions. We would be reaching out to hundred thousand plus educators, twenty thousand plus institutions, and thousand plus eminent speakers like today's speakers would be joining us to share their perspective and to suggest a roadmap. Uh, for full implementation of this policy now i would request please join me in welcoming our today's speakers our first key speaker for the day uh, dr neeta bali ma'am dr neeta bali ji is the director principal with gd goenka uh, world school sona uh, haryana she has decades of experience in education she, she has been recognized and awarded for her contribution to the field of education she has worked with the top schools of country uh, we are honored with your presence dr bali uh, thank you for joining Our next key speaker for the day, uh, Dr. Amita Sachena. Dr. Amita uh, is a principal with Rotary Public School Gurugram. She is a gold medalist uh, in B.Ed. and Ph.D. in Botany. She has also uh, successfully completed courses in differentiated learning strategies from Wide World Harvard. She has a rich experience of 25 years uh, as an academician and administrator. She is a CBSC awardee 2019 and Delhi State Teachers Awardee uh, in Principals category 2016. She has also received many other acclaimed awards like Guru Dharan Award 2019, Inspiring Educator Award 2018, and 2017 from Roxford. She has also received Dr. S. Radha Krishnan Award by NGO Parak 2016. She is an you know she has also received Inspiring Educator Award uh, uh, from Ms. Kiran Bedi for innovative practices in the field of education in 2014. We are honored with your presence, uh, Amita Ma'am. Thank you for joining. Our next key speaker for the day, uh, Sunil Dangi ji. Uh, uh, he is a founder and CEO of E Mango uh, Edu Solutions. Uh, Mr. Sunil is an IIT graduate. He is having master's degree in mathematics and scientific computing. He is also part of uh, actuary and member on the Institute of Actuary United Kingdom. He has worked with uh, institutions like I ICICI Prudential, HSBC, Financial Risk Advisor at Ernst and Young, uh, India and UK. He is an entrepreneur for last six years in telecom, food and education. he has been doing a research on career counseling for last two years based on that research uh, he along with his team have come up with the e mango which is a digital uh, career counseling platform uh, we welcome you sunil ji thank you for joining our next key speaker for the day uh, mr luke masato uh, luke is the head of quality with fatado school of music fatado school of music is india's largest music educator it is a brand which is synonymous with music in our country it has a 150 year old uh, rich legacy this is working with 200 plus leading schools of india it has trained over 1 lakh students uh, you know it owns many uh, renowned titles like bandit which is india's largest school level music competition to promote music talents across all schools it also owns titles like piano concert cadence workshops high jam trainings fsm exams in center recital fsm recital it enjoys partnerships with renowned institutions like berkeley college of music and nmims school of performing arts We we welcome you, uh, Luke. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Now, uh, you know, we would uh, begin the session. 
uh, with the opening remark of our speakers uh, 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 and uh, you know dr neeta wali has not hasn't joined yet she will join in the next some moments so uh, i would request amita ma'am if we can have your opening remark and then we would come to you as well why not amita ma'am yeah okay okay um so good afternoon everyone uh, it's a pleasure being here um being on board as a panelist is always like you know and discussing education especially is always like being in your school with your teachers or being inside your classroom with your students when you are sharing your knowledge interacting with them and learning from them so um in school we we use various modes of learning you know uh, be it experiential mode of learning where we uh, do learn by doing and uh, then this competency based learning where you know the students have to be uh, given the training to become workplace ready in future now keeping uh, the these uh, few modes of uh, learning which we have recently been using on the behest of and guidelines of cbsc we have done a lot of experience uh, you know experiments and uh, trained our students now with the coming nep uh, the drafts and the uh, you know we really worked the teachers and the principals they gave their suggestions and it was a, a collaborative effort and when it has come out it has its own merits and demerits so there are seven points where educators have raised their brows but most of them are really going to be fruitful so uh, keeping in mind the future requirements of the next generation i think the nep which uh, has been drafted will really work because uh, you know it will do away with rote learning according to the uh, features and instill confidence and uh, nationalistic pride among our students so with that i i think i'll uh, leave the podium for the other speakers to give their introductory remarks thank you thank you amita ma'am and uh... certainly this nep uh, you know will have a very uh, uh, important uh, place in the history of education and uh, sunil ji i would request uh, uh, if you we can have your opening remark uh, good afternoon everyone uh, new as far as uh, uh, my perspective about a new education policy is concerned uh, this is a very very good idea and an idea if uh, that cannot be executed very well so it will be of no use and that's why this platform is there uh, rajul is putting lots of efforts to keep on discussing uh, in the length and breadth of uh, the new education policy now uh, uh, there is a we are happy that uh, this education policy is will be making the student more workplace ready as uh, amita ma'am was saying that this is a training was uh, but the thing is that uh, it is making the student uh we need to make the student to learn by themselves we have to make them in a habit of that how to learn instead of just feeding them that you have to you know, doing the ratification and it is very important uh, to decide the right career at the right time generally what happens is that uh, uh, people well looking for a job they just concentrate on that i need a job as per my interest skills and personality but the due importance is not being given at the right time which should happen at a class of 9 10th or 11th or 12th and uh, as their new education policy is allowing more option for the students uh, there will be no dividing the students only in three categories that the humanities science and uh, uh, commerce so the more confusion will be there so now the thing is that what how will we solve that problem how to execute it and our product is here to solve uh, that problem uh, itself and uh, then i'll uh, discuss in detail when uh, at my turn and that's all thank you thank you arsunil ji uh, now i would request luke uh, luke uh, you know you represent that our side of education and this policy has given a very important and i would say very uh, you know uh, uh, focus approach uh, towards uh, that art education so how do you see that and what are uh, you know what's your opening remark on nep Luke. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rajul. Uh, so my name is Luke. I am actually from Tadu School of Music, uh, and of course, I will be giving more of a uh, perspective from the perspective of uh, you know the creative arts, music specifically. So we are actually thrilled to see the inclusion of vocational studies in the new twenty uh, twenty policy, and uh, we think it's a giant step, you know, towards the holistic development of a child because 
now uh, everything is included. Uh, inclusion of vocational courses into the mainstream education system will actually encourage children to think a little creatively and gain new experiences, uh, both of which are actually important, right, for a child's development. And of course, uh, you know, music uh, can be used also as uh, not only for entertainment, but for self-expression. And there are the various values that you can actually add when it comes to, uh, you know, putting any kind of an art course or including any of these art courses. So we are glad that all children will now have the opportunity to reap these benefits of vocational courses uh, that will definitely equip them, you know, with life skills and, uh, you know, it will definitely contribute to their development on the whole. Uh, a little more about it later on. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, you know, in fact, uh, you know, uh, this is a 50 second session when we are interacting with a lot of educators. We are also receiving questions, you know, in all these sessions. So we believe, uh, you know, uh, more and more awareness is required. You know, to to create, uh, to to create, uh, to to inform everyone about this national education policy. In fact, uh, uh, you know, people are confused about that langu language. Uh, you know, uh, part uh, which has been mentioned to this uh, education policy. People are, you know, uh, that vocational integration of vocational education at school level. So a lot of educators have raised their doubts that how it would be possible. You know, uh, how logistics would be made, uh, how arrangements can be done for those things. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, we would be discussing those things, and uh, uh, in the end, we would be presenting questions, right? So uh, now uh, I would request our uh, Sunil ji, uh, you know, if we can have, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, with this this uh, national education policy has given a very important emphasis upon these skills, you know, uh, uh, to make people uh, ready uh, for the jobs. Uh, McKinsey, uh, uh, you know, uh, brought and a study, uh, you know, few years back that 82 percent people in India. They are not employable. Obviously, we know that uh, people are not employed, but uh, that was very interesting. The fact that 82% graduates, you know, who come out of our colleges, they are not employable. So one very important uh, reason uh, was given that most of the students, when they choose their graduation course, so they choose uh, due to some other reasons. Uh, uh, Sometimes, and in fact, most of the times, without doing a thorough research, you know, about that particular course. So once they join that course, they, they don't find any interest in exploring or a genuine interest, you know, in, in doing good in that particular course. So uh, you have done your research in that part and you have also, uh, you know, found that how NEP uh, is bringing uh, the new alignments in that direction. So I would request Sunilji if we can have your thoughts and perspective on this. And obviously would like to know about your product, that eMango, how you can help our students. Sunilji. Yeah, thanks, Rajul. Do you know ki, uh, one of the most difficult question in the life is to know what I wanted to do. It's a very difficult question for everybody. So the thing is that how to find that answer. And uh, especially for the child, it has become more difficult. Generally, what happens is uh, uh, from the child will keep on asking and just pointing out the finger, what kya banoge? Kya banoge? So, but are we providing our child the platforms where they themselves can know such kind of answers? Or even the people, those are guiding them. Do they have really, do they have the answer for that child? Even if a child will ask from somebody, Main kya banu? So will we have the answer for that? So it's very difficult to answer such questions. And for that, to uh, we are developing a technology platform where a child himself can get in a habit of exploring the careers and finding the best fit for himself or herself, as well as the people those are guide the child, like teachers, parents, they can also explore the things over there. And we are making the solution very easy and effective. So now I will uh, directly take you to the uh, kind of uh, uh, platform we are developing and the purpose over here is that uh, because uh, like Amita Ma'am is there and you also have lots of experience in the education or Luke has also been so I would like to hear you people if you can give us some more feedback so that we can make this platform more effective and uh, more easy because each should be always be there if the solution will not be easy and the, then the student or the child will not be taking that solution at all. So uh, I'll just start with my presentation. Yes, sir. 
I'll share my screen. Name of uh, our organization is eMango, and uh, that's uh, stand for education management on the go. From education management, it's not from the learning point of view. It is from the various other perspective that uh, what career you should choose, which college you should apply, what are the scholarship, everything should be available in a digital platform. So we are saying uh, education management on the go is the name of our organization. Now the problem statement is that conventional ways of choosing the career seems to be not the best way and also the admission planning seems to be not the best way that the, the child choose a career or admission planning now what are the conventional ways of choosing a career we are working with the uh, r and d department of id delhi to solve, to solve this problem and this is our team i'll uh, come on again on the team first uh, let me tell you what are the conventional ways of choosing the career generally a child choose the career under the guidance or influence of uh, parents peers society family teachers etc but are the people those who are guiding the child are they aware of all the career options or do they aware of the decent number of career options do they understand the child's uh, aptitude interest and personality and emotional intelligence which plays a very vital role while choosing a career now do they even know the path that how to reach at the epitome of a particular career. The basic question is that a person who is guiding the child, are they qualified to do so or not? Of course, their intention is not to misguide the child, but somehow they are not qualified. And there are lack of platforms, especially the ease of the platform is not there, where they themselves can explore and guide the, uh, guide the child properly. Now, due to wrong choice of the career, what can it lead to? It leads to dropouts. It can lead to unemployable degree holders. Like Rajul said, there are 84% of uh, 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 bachelors are not employable. So that's uh, because of the people have not chosen the career the right way. Dropouts, unemployable degree holders, or it can also lead to restlessness because if you will be doing something which does not suit your interest, personality, and aptitude, you will be remaining restless. And in extreme circumstances, either during the studies or later on in the life, that could lead to suicide also. And these are not all just assumptions. There are facts for it. These are the few facts. This is a Hindu's news where it 200, uh, 2,461 student dropped out after taking admission into IITs. So it's a one should think about it. Why? Why someone will leave after clearing a J after such a tough exam and why getting to the some such a premier institute? Why the people are leaving? Now, uh, Rajul, you were saying 82% uh, or 84%. Actually, this is an economic times news where you're talking about the whole bachelors, but here only about the engineers. Economic times says that 94% of engineering graduates are not fit for job. It's such a big concern. And another one is that uh, it could lead to suicide. So in India, every one and a half hour, one student suicide. So this is such a big problem that the wrong choice of career can lead so many problems in the life. So it is a uh, the choosing the career is not being given the due importance. And even if it is being given the due importance, the platforms are not available, which can be easily used and the, we can uh, make the child to you know learn themselves to how to choose the career. It's very important to do so. Now, now what is the problem for that solution? Yeah, this is another one. That what happens is this is a one. Uh, this I tried to make it a Venn diagram, but uh, I couldn't make it. Anyways, so this is the pool of the career where you are interested. I mean, a child is interested through the some other unqualified guidance. Maybe this is a pool of the interest. Now, what is the best fit for the child is this one, right? And the pool of the career, which he can afford due to external circumstances, due to the family income, location, or other constraint. The intersection of these is the intersection of the career is the best fit for the child. 
where we have to end there is no scientific way of finding out this intersection if a child will remain in say this portion or this portion somewhere here so he is not going to be succeed so it is very important to uh, now the i have told you the problem now what is the solution to this problem as i said the the person who is guiding the child or child himself is not aware of all the career option exist so there should be a platform where a child can explore all the careers and uh, then after exploring the career he can find out the best fit or to find out the best fit there are psychometric tests through which a child can uh, come to know her his or her interest personality and aptitude and then that can be mapped to the best fit career for that and then the path that after finding the best fit career then what a for do uh, to go to that career what are the courses are required what are the colleges what are the entrance exam all this information should be available in a same platform so now the work which you are doing is going to increase the uh, happiness index because the people will be doing uh, you know india is the sixth depressed country in the world there's a very strange figure uh, uh, that was a survey done by the who so if the people in that our product will lead to increase the happiness index because the people will be doing the work which suits their education which they have and which suits their aptitude and uh, personality and interest so it is really going to help and there is a you know 90% of the people do not do what they study and the work they are doing they haven't studied that so how it can bring the happiness or the economic efficiency this is killing both the ways so it is very important to choose the right career and which can help to increase the happiness index and as well as the economic efficiencies and this is a survey which you did do uh, you just wanted to check whether the people really need such kind of things are they really confused so we did a survey and 92% 92.4% of the parents need such platform and 94.4% per percent parents says yes we need a scientific way of choosing a career not, uh, by knowing the personality interest and aptitude of the child so this shows the need now thing is that in india the number of counselors are very less uh, if you will see that there are uh, there is one counselor per 3200 student and in us there is on, uh, per 21 student there is one counselor so and we don't know whether they are in india the counselor itself are expert or not that's another question now we cannot solve this problem with the only with the counselors so we need to develop a technological platform to escalate it to the masses and for that we are removing a requirement of the counselor to the large extent through our platform and it is the diy do it yourself it is very easy to use and very interesting now uh we are removing the complexity we are making the things easy now this is from the school administration generally what is expected by the parents and the uh, students that they expect that teacher should tell me parents also keep on coming to the teacher and they ask him ko kaun sa stream dilwa de ji fir once is the child is in 11 12 which exam he should appear for which college he should apply for are are the teachers really aware of do they have all the information available with them or even if the information is available with them uh, do they have the time to do so now this is i am talking about the school administration the school administration has another problem what happens is teachers want a less workload and only want to teach they said ki my work is mostly teaching i just want to teach and this they sometimes they demand ki why the child can not explore from somewhere but it is very difficult to explore there, there is no dedicated platform and this is the management side with uh, management side uh, which is expected from the principal they want a high revenue less expenses high reputation and unique features so our product is a very because it's a technology based uh, platform so the cost of this has been reduced to the large extent in comparison to the existing players now as i said there sh uh, there should be a career exploration so there should be a library for the career exploration and our library is very interesting that is uh, audio visual based there are uh, uh, a child can uh, or a parent can access it anywhere and everywhere and they need not to read the boring text because you know reading the text is very difficult you have to give the dedicated time here a child is going to the gym or is walking to the park or uh, he can explore it wherever he wants 
and our psychometric assessment are are also very interesting our psychometric assessment are not the text based psychometric assessment these are the video games a child will be playing the game and his psychometric assessment will be conducted in the back end that the uh, what are the steps he will choose while playing the game our reports are also the multilingual and audio visual our reports are also not uh, just a text based and we so that it's a multilingual any because in india the english is a very big problem only 10% of the people understand the english so at least to communicate to the uh, parents it's very important that it should be multilingual just imagine uh, if a report is coming for a child that uh, psychometric assessment and there's a audio visual that uh, you to uh, adamunda extrovert hai ga hai extrovert munde ye kar de hai us so it will be easier for the mothers to understand everything now these are the few schools where we have attached our this and it is very easy uh, for any school to get it uh, for example i click on this i'll just show you that how easy it is school no, just they have to ask their web developer website developer they just add a uh, just uh, an icon for the careers and we'll be doing everything after that because there is just a url need to set you just click on that and you'll see the child can start exploring the careers it is everything will be happen school's own website there is every information of the uh, every information has been given on, on this platform this is one this is one of the child's dashboard if you'll go on the dashboard see there is a he can explore career he can find out best fit he can explore the college and exam then he can keep on making his cart this is the child's wish list and this is the session for him or her based on his psychometric assessment based on his stream based on his location preferences based on his uh, family income and all so this is that easy a child will explore here i'll just show you it will take just one minute uh, say you is a digital marketing and he can every information in the audio visual format so he can just uh, just uh, explore it are you someone who has solid analytical and planning skills and good imagination do you have knowledge of marketing do you like writing contents how good are you at social media so these are the everything is in a audio visual format and if you just go down then you can see the this is the information which parents and they like to see what is the prospect of this particular career what are the future prospect is a very high what are the past job trends 2017 these many job 18 these many and 2019 these many jobs what are the salaries at the entry level minimum maximum at the middle level and every information is available here the list of colleges available top colleges for this particular career what are the course fees minimum maximum india and abroad so he can just click on this after exploring it maybe he is interested in click on this and it will be added to his wish list this is the wish list of the child and then he need not to go again again and explore the things again and similarly he can explore the colleges and exams he will just go here and he can explore the colleges which colleges are there what is their uh, ranking he can just click on the shortlist button and that career will get again shortlisted in his cart so a student can keep on making his cart and later on and he can also select the exams they, like there are so many exams are there right for which he wants to appear he can shortlist and once he would have shortlisted the exam we will keep on sending him the automatic reminder for his uh, uh, when the form is coming what what is the last date have you filled up the form or not because you have just chosen for the this particular exam so this kind of reminder will be keep on going to the child so it is very easy to use and effective and our generally this is the question which is asked from the child aap kya banna chahte hain matlab how can a child give answer this is our character hero he will ask the child to just play the game with me and a psychometric assessment will be there and child himself will see the report yes this is my the, uh, it will be in a very simple language a child will understand yes that that's what i am so as i said hum the most uh, difficult question is uh, to know ki mere ko karna kya hai and 90% of the people don't uh, just a sec i just ha huh? 90% of the people are not doing what they have learned this is very very 
bad and that that brings the high in economic inefficiencies and happiness and you know it's it's such a beautiful pro, uh, product that and there is a, no complexity today is uh, schools generally a career counseling do from the uh, i don't know there will be some good schools which will be doing due diligently otherwise mostly a career counselor aata hai auditorium mein khada hota hai ek ghanta wo matlab bol ke jata hai there are medical non medical all the students are there so what kind of and then the student when he comes out of the auditorium 90% of them forgot what he said there is no you know there is nothing that school can track what a child can do and we have the platform for the school administration they can track that what my child is doing have they taken the psychometric assessment what they have chosen have they chosen their curriculum i'll just show you the school board uh, school dashboard it's very uh, interesting one this is the prototype i'm showing you uh just a sec let me show you my screen again i'm sorry it will take just uh, rajul just give me one minute because the important topic i know i may be running out of time but just a sec <clears throat> the team is uh, maybe he would have they would remove no no not an issue so uh, anyways and i'll uh, just like to show you the team which is working on this this is the team we have this is the team and uh, this is professor purnima we are working with the r&d department of iit delhi and she's a head of psychology she's a, a very renowned personality in uh, uh, psychometric world and uh, she is uh, uh, president of international association of applied psychology she is a uh, editor in chief of springer journal and she has a huge knowledge of uh, psychology uh, dr isha dr vijay pande he is a very senior psychometrician he is a phd guy he is working from france with us uh, she is meera she is a head counselor in iit delhi iit bombay and uh, these are few people from uh, btech mbas iit so we are developing a very very good platform and we have been doing our research for uh, last two years and after that getting the full insight by understanding the problem of the school administration why are they are not able to do it and what is the psyche of a parent generally a parent want ki bhai mera bachcha jo hai na 25 saal ke baad naukri lag jaye aur sab settle ho jaye he is he is more uh, he is he wants to know what will the job prospect be when my child will pass out what is the salaries so that information should be provided so after having lot of insight we have developed this product and uh, thank you rajul thanks for uh, hearing me out and that's all my thank, thank you uh, thank you sunil ji and certainly you have raised very important points and uh, you know in my experience I, we would request amita ma'am uh, during her talk if we, she she can share her perspective on this but you know but i have realized that uh, the, the schools are only the uh, you know they they they, they are not expected they are not supposed to deliver on that career uh, you know front So they are they are they are supposed to deliver on that you know academic front so you know in 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 my informal talks uh, you know what i have received from educators that uh, you know uh, parents are not you know expecting schools uh, to to create a road map you know uh, for their uh, for their kids for their children you know you prepare our children for a for a good career you, you know you make them you empower them so that they can choose their careers you know uh, so uh, let's right career uh, you know it's kind of a it's kind of a process we should start at the, the the class of let's say 7th or 8th you know uh, it it takes time in exploring uh, what are my interests you know it takes time uh, you know sometimes we spend our entire life but we are not able to find out like what actually are my interests you know so certainly it should start at the level of 6th and 7th and uh, but how many how many parents are there you know who are who are ready to you know Uh, i would say invest uh, that kind of time or they are ready uh, that you know they are ready to you know attend a career counseling seminar at the expense of their uh, their, their unit tests or at the expense of some their academic uh, kind of uh, time so schools are the i would say uh, you know the role of school is 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 overrated is overrated right so school have their limitations you know schools have limitations and they have to work under those limitations if they you know the limitations from parents limitations from you know the the market scenario everything so you uh, said very right that uh, you know uh, there is a requirement for this kind of uh, program now the new age parents who are coming up 
you know they are flexible for new age careers they are flexible you know they are, they are not looking for uh, you know percentage only this is my uh, uh, perspective i'm sure amita ma'am would bring a ground level uh, perspective on this you know what actually parents are looking for and uh, so uh, before uh, i come to amita ma'am uh, you know uh, i would request luke if we can have your uh, you know uh, uh, but uh, your assessment on this nep uh, in the side of uh, that art uh, education how do you see that uh, art education would get evolved after the implementation of nep clue oh thank you so much rajul uh yes so from the point of view of uh, combining education and uh, co curricular arts as was uh, very rightly pointed by our speaker earlier mr sareen uh, getting you know showing them a road map showing them a pathway is super important for a student so let's say if a student wants to have a, a co curricular subject if uh, you know i want to learn music and i want to carve out a career in music performance or first of all do we even know that there how many uh, you know how many uh, career choices are there in music for a for a child to go into the two main career choices that we know that comes to our mind immediately when we think of music one is uh, performance uh, going on stage and performing and the second one is becoming a teacher what we do not know is that there are many others there is uh, a student can actually become a composer an arranger something called a transcriber transcription is basically you know getting all music into staff notation into readable format you hear music but who is that person who gets music into readable format so that's the transcription you have music researchers you have a subject called musicology and uh, you know you have music therapy as well so quite a few of uh, you know quite a few careers over there to help a student carve out what to do once they happen to choose any of the arts as a as a mainstream career and uh, you know as uh, it was rightly pointed out earlier also when a student is in school and uh, you know they are inclined towards the arts it could be anything it could be you know poetry language uh, speaking languages learning new languages uh, music uh, lyrics writing as well so there is no proper road map given as to what do they do once they you know have really in they have decided that i want to become this i want to do that uh instead what happens is you know the student just ends up giving tension to the parents and uh, the parents try their best to convince the student uh nahi bacha this is not how it is see your neighbor uh, rahul over there has become uh, an engineer deepak here is a doctor what do you want to do becoming a musician or an artist that is uh, your life though is gone so that is, is actually that's such a negative uh, impact that you know that a student goes through because and is really bad you know because the student knows that the only thing that he is good in right now uh is maybe one of the fine arts the student has this incl inclination he knows this thing that he is more uh, inclined towards let's say becoming a music a musician he loves the guitar and he loves to do that and he wants to make that guitar his career and then his parents you know start feeding him with information saying that what you're doing right now is not right because look at your neighbors that comparison is beginning so that definitely starts putting the child into a a big state of confusion ki mai kya karu after my 10th or my 11th or my 12th uh should i compromise and then should i just go ahead and take up commerce and and remain unhappy for the rest of my life or should i take up science and struggle uh to remain happy but you know at the end we know it's not going to happen and you know that may probably tie up into what mr sunil said earlier regarding the suicides and the general unhappiness quotient in a lot of students right now so uh you know we at fataro school of music what we try to do is that we try to actually speak to the school and give them a road map to help students to help them at least uh you know inform the students that you know uh if you want to if you want to go into this particular form of career 
you do not worry you do not have to worry about it because there is somebody over there who's looking out for you and you know you don't worry about it put your head down close your eyes and blindly go ahead with it because there is this really strong institution that has had the backing of a lot of research a lot of years of study a lot of uh, collaborations with let's say artists in that particular field to give you what you need and i think you know basically what uh, in general a parent just requires is uh, you know that little bit of confidence that what they are doing what the student is going to do is you know is going to be a very fruitful career for him ahead so i'll just show you a small uh, presentation that i have over here uh, just one moment here we go this is basically about kadaru school of music and uh, a little bit of 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 you know what we are uh we have been over here for a very long time uh you know which is why we can very confidently say that yes this institution is the largest in the country in terms of getting a quality music education across to the students and across to schools so that you as a school can also you know very confidently use it as an as a usp to get students to uh you know enroll and uh, this really helps because as i said we have, you know there's a very strong legacy behind this uh, this is you know just a few brands that we have been just a few schools actually that we have been uh, working with over here and uh, we will continue to work with and uh, you know so that uh, basically our curriculum is shared across to everybody over there who is and who knows the seriousness of of a student who really wants is inclined towards the uh, the artistic side so uh, you know along with the curriculum of course there are a few things that we give one of them is this very large platform for students and schools to participate in when it comes to performances because uh, your teacher your teacher study in your teacher teaching in your school does not have at this point the resources and the means to give a very strong platform to that student who wants to uh, you know reach out to an audience beyond your school you want your students to reach to an audience beyond your school so that you know they can actually portray what they know across and there are a few platforms which are actually which we have done and which has connected students from all across the country and we have a lot of uh students and teachers coming in and you know just basically enrolling for this and so it's it's a really funny fun affair and uh, you know one good thing is that when the school enrolls for this program they also get the opportunity to have uh, an artist a celebrity artist to come to visit the school and actually have a session with the students so that the students who are inclined towards uh the artistic side can have a one on one experience with the artist who has actually gone through it so that in itself is a very strong factor because you learn a lot by you know some by listening to somebody who's just telling you uh, face to face what i have been through okay now students you need to do this 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 because i did this and it was a mistake but when i did this it was correct and uh, you know these kind of sessions are very difficult to get in the artistic sphere of the academic field you will not find a lot of uh, you you know musicians coming forth and giving and sharing their best practices or pearls of wisdom with students and why it's just because you know people have not you we have not had people to do that before earlier it was not possible to get these people but now with fsm that that opportunity is possible and we have been sending uh, people across you know we have been sending experts uh, professional musicians celebrities across to schools to have a word with students and so that they can share their uh, insight with them so of course you know because of uh, the pandemic and everything we have had to move online uh, we have quite a few uh, you know webinars that run each week with everybody and everyone is uh, welcome to join this our teachers 
they undergo a lot of training, almost 60 days of training in a year to ensure that there is, uh, you know, the curriculum delivered is actually at par. And, you know, uh, because of today's social media exposure, of course, you know, we are available all over. Uh, Fataru School of Music is available all over. And uh, you can just reach out to us anytime you want. Uh, just a couple of things. These are just a few awards that we have received, uh, you know, in the past because of the curriculum. Our strongest point is, of course, the curriculum because we have we have had so much of thought put into it and leading pedagogists across the world and in different countries have contributed and have helped us get a very robust and stable music curriculum to be shared with schools. This is what your typical... Uh, classroom would look like of course right now it's more of an online session and and you know but once schools do begin and you know god forbid i hope it does happen soon this is what your uh, session would actually look like there's a proper uh, lab setup and there's a teacher that we give the material is also from us the teaching techniques are also given by us and we can either train your teachers or we can send our own teachers to you so all this is actually, uh, you know, part of the entire year. So basically, that's what it is. I'll just share a small video with everybody over here. Give me one moment. I think I've come to the end of the presentation. Rajinji, just one moment. Okay, I'm just sharing a small video. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Luke. Uh, now, uh, let's invite, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Amita Saksinaji for her keynote uh, talk. Uh, Amita, ma'am, you have heard the, uh, you know, perspective from, uh, you know, uh, from, from different perspective, uh, you know, from different side of uh, this education world. We would like to hear your opinion on these two uh, uh, sides as well. And, uh, you know, what are your perspective on NEP? You know, how, how much hope you have with the NEP and what roadmap you suggest, ma'am? Okay. So, um, I'll uh, pick up. Uh, you are on mute, ma'am. You are on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, well, I would first pick up the question that you had raised when uh, Mr. Sunil was uh, speaking. You, you had said something about uh, what is it that the schools think about counseling coming into the school. Are the schools... Uh, um, you'll have to excuse me for one minute. Is there a call yes, from... Please, please, please.
apologies um so uh, yeah now coming back to that point i had noted down the, the that part where you said uh, that you know uh, rather than uh, schools uh, you know bringing in counselors into the school uh, you know this is a better system where where you have just got the link of your or a tab of your uh, you know counselor on the website and you can easily access through that with the, on the on the virtual platform so uh, well i i have had uh, uh, diverse uh, experiences uh, so it's not that uh, the schools are not responsible for career counseling anymore they are responsible so uh, not just uh, uh, having you know uh, fests sometimes some schools have career fests so it is not a year year round process where career uh, counseling is being done by the school or by somebody who the school hires uh, however there are some schools which have got uh, you know through the year system of career counseling wherein a specialized uh, uh, counselor professional counselor sits in the school and counsels the groups of students as well as individual one to one and i've seen both of these work however this uh, system of having it online virtually now with the pandemic having uh, you know devastated us i think a uh, lot of things have become virtual so uh, i'm sure that this will become easier and will be uh, a go to for most of the parents who don't have time so uh, i will definitely you know uh, try out myself and uh, recommend it to some parents who will not otherwise pay up for the physical counseling and uh, yes uh, schools should empower students no doubt but uh, like you said earlier uh, that sometimes when uh, children do engineering for example and 90% are not fit it is unfortunate but at the same time i think uh, with freedom of uh, doing every, everything and anything they should have the chance and the ability and uh, the, the desire if they have to to pursue what they want at whichever age is what i feel um then uh, i've also noted down a few points which uh, luke has said uh, he spoke about parents not allowing uh, children um, to pursue their dreams especially if they are to do with uh, performing arts and creative arts yeah i would partly agree and partly not because things have started changing now uh with cbsc coming up with this national uh, education policy where there's lot of stress about uh, you know art integrated education which had started earlier also it's not just uh, that you know in the nep only it has been stated we had started doing it the the syllabus the manuals had been created by uh, cbsc we had been provided with that so uh, yes it took time for teachers to go through that yes it took uh, you know efforts and ability to be used in the uh, school education system so hence the need of professionals like you where uh, you know we could just ask for help come on you come and uh, help us out that's what i feel and uh, with parents becoming more aware more uh, broad uh, in their acceptance of this kind of career uh, route also i think uh, Yeah, yeah, and yeah. At times, for example, musician. Yes, the musician can you know go on making music till the age of hundred. But you know, if you're becoming a dancer, I might say tell my uh, child that you are. If you're going to pursue dancing, you know, another ten years you may be able to dance. And after that, what happens when your energy you know becomes less and less and finally finishes? Same thing happens in the area of sports. So, uh, but then. with the modernization of uh, careers i think lot of careers it's not just playing and dancing and uh, playing uh, the music or playing the sport it's also about managing those sports it's also about managing music it's also about producing directing music so that can be done at any age until whatever age so i'm sure parents have started be becoming more uh, accepting in terms of uh, Uh, this kind of career uh, route also for their children and i'm very glad about it however having said that i know that percentage of those parents is less even now uh, so it's easier for uh, a parent to decide okay four years of engineering and then you start making the quick buck you know and uh, you will be you know, loaded by the age of 40 so then you can sit and relax at home so that's that's another way of thinking 
uh having i, I think i have already targeted whatever the few things that i really wanted to talk about uh the points that you had raised um i'll come back to uh, the the national education policy um i would say the major aspects of the policy that can potentially transform school education are focus on foundational learning universal access to pre primary education which was not there till now uh, not universally then a key stage assessments to measure learning outcomes integrating uh, technology in education which is very important which has started being already done in schools for a long time now and universally this year so um, prioritizing foundational learning uh, i think by class 3 is a step to fill a critical gap in the children's learning to read and the uh, you know solving basic arithmetic so it is called uh, you know learning literacy and numeracy foundational course of literacy and numeracy where a child should be able to read by the by the time the child is in class 3 he, he or she should be able to read he or she should be able to do basic arithmetic for that you know the the there, there should be some uh, some uh, typical you know uh, uh, grading to be done for example there could be uh, there could be um, a way of trying to analyze and assess whether the child who is in class 2 is able to read about 60 uh, you know uh, in in half a minute what how many number of words that child can read so and similarly when he reaches class 3 uh, if he or she was able to read about 50 words in a uh, in 10 minutes or in 5 minutes is the same child able to read about 90 words then so that is great that is gradient and where here comes the you know basic need of having fln that is literacy and numeracy foundation of literacy and numeracy which has been uh, covered by uh, nep and slowly uh, after 21 22 it will be uh, you know uh, they will start working on the system of bringing it into schools and by 22 uh, 23 uh, it will be broadened into uh, pre primary and primary levels to ensure that we, we you know uh, we are set up for the success in achieving this fln uh, these things have to be really taken into account so uh, i think uh, besides uh, fln the pre primary schooling uh, also has uh, seen a change uh, not just the pre primary uh, the entire schooling system has seen a change because now it is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 uh, you know system where uh, the classes the pre primary and the primary classes have been put together in a uh, scheme of 5 plus 3 where 5 is the initial uh, the bal balwadi type anganwadi uh, area where uh, earlier in uh, in government schools in in schools which were not a public uh, area private schools they had straight away you know they began with class 1 uh but now all schools universally universally will have to have 3 years of that basic initial learning which will be like a nursery kg and L ukg that is 3 plus 1 and 2 will become 5 and then 3 to 5 that is plus 3 and then 6 to 8 which is the middle level all right and then the secondary level so it will it will be like you know a from 3 a to 8 years of age uh it will be called foundational stage and from 8 to 11 years it will be preparatory schooling and from 11 to 14 years it will be middle school which is quite similar to what we have now and from 14 to 18 years together 9 to uh, classes 9 to 12 will be the secondary classes so uh the new framework uh, uh has this uh focus on uh cognitive and psycho social development of the children so um after have after uh, you know this i think uh, i would definitely want to uh, talk about uh, the creation of performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development which is parak p a r a k a h so this is also this has also got a, a, a you know lot of importance in the national framework uh, new education policy and a national level assessment center that will set the standards norms and guidelines for student evaluations across school boards is proposed 
so this is called parak and slowly you know uh, till now what are the schools mostly doing except for some progressive schools which have also you know kind of developed in in the past decade most schools are still assessing on the uh, basis of marks and grades which marks are converted to grades however rubrics and the use of rubrics making rubrics and using them is something that our teachers will need a training on and that's why par and i'm sure uh, once this starts working uh, once this starts being made and it is being allowed by this uh, to be used by the schools then it will be a definitely uh, an achievement for uh, for the government and the th authorities who have put in so much effort to bring out this nep besides this i think um, uh, there are a few more things that i would like to talk about nep um okay i've already spoken about uh, parak i've already spoken about the 5 plus 3 plus 3 and uh, the last i think i would like to pick up um the assessments for classes 3 5 and 8 will focus on learning outcomes according to the new educational policy uh this encourages analytical thinking and moves away from rote learning which is the major target of nep to move away from rote learning and uh for that there is lot of work work that has to be done whether it is teacher education or it is school education or it is students education or it is adult education all se school education te teacher education ae adult education all of this has been targeted and and anyhow classes in the schools will have to be assessed and there we will need to focus on systems which deviate or go away from rote learning and open up windows for remediations for students who might need additional help so these key stage assessments will also become an indicator for parents now till now how are parents trying to uh, you know finalize the school in which they they will admit their child they look at the infrastructure and they also maybe uh, look at the medium of instruction okay fine the school has got a wonderful building uh, okay fine this school also has uh, an english medium um, uh, mode of instruction and uh, most of the staff members are very fluent in english and hence this is the school for my child however once we come up with this kind of assent assessment where we have taken away the ch taken the children away from rote learning and this school those schools which are you know enhancing this mode of learning where it is no more rote parents will have definitely more options to put their children in schools like those and reformed board examinations for class 10 and 12 with low stakes and based on conceptual understanding and experiential learning is also an important reform so um you know it is uh, while i am talking about uh, assessments i'm talking about the the uh, system of 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 <clears throat> i'm also aware that uh, having seen the pandemic coming in we've also seen lot of educational technology being used now which was not earlier being used so suddenly we fell in the trap of uh holding these virtual classes with no or very minimum uh, experience in that area however we just rose to the occasion i would call i would you know i ask all of you request all of you to give a big round of applause to all the teachers in this uh, platform because they are the ones who really rose to the occasion and within weeks they mastered the art of being virtual trainers mentors teachers educators for themselves as well as for their uh, students so um that was that is one another important thing that uh, nep is uh, targeting and uh, so uh, with those points i think i have covered whatever is more interesting for the teaching fraternity and uh, besides this like i said earlier also there are a lot of uh, controversies also like uh, i think mr sunil had raised the point about 
uh, vocations and i think luke also said something about it so vocations uh, they are from 6 or 7 or 7 or 8 they should be introduced but at the same time having too many vocations and too many options uh, would require the the necessity of having trained vocational teachers so once we start doing that and of course another uh, another uh, point of discussion which which has caused a little uh, kind of uncertainty in the minds of teachers in schools is the usage of mother tongue in in uh, delivering the uh, education so uh, those two points i think uh, will have to need will need a lot of deliberation will need a lot of uh, work at the end of the authorities uh, cbsc scert um, ncert all of these organizations along with very very intellectual uh, experienced uh, principals directors who have finished a lifetime of their uh, contribution in uh, educational institutions thank you and um, uh, with that i would definitely want to also say that uh, uh, really recently i heard on the uh, tv that a uh, vaccine is going to come by the end of this year so i was i think all of, of all my staff along with me will join my hands and pray that the vaccine works and we all start go back to the normalcy of life that we used to enjoy thank you everyone absolutely absolutely and we we are we are praying along with you ma'am that vaccine works right so big thanks uh, amita ma'am and uh, you know uh, these are very important points which you have raised you know uh, uh, and certainly uh, with the implementation of nep you know uh, we are trying uh, we are making an important effort you know in achieving all these uh, points be it uh, in terms of learning outcomes or you know holistic development and assessment uh, which is certainly uh, you know deserves that kind of attention which has been given through nep and uh, you know uh, you, you talked about the career thing and uh, why why so, uh, so less parents and uh, mrs sunil also talked about that we also do a lot of uh, you know career uh, uh, sessions with students i i strongly believe that we shouldn't ca- call it career counseling we should call it life counseling you know there is a difference when we, when we are choosing a course so uh, uh, we we generally say that that we are choosing a career you know uh, i'm i'm choosing mbbs i'm choosing uh, you know bcom or ca or musician or whatever actually we are not choosing a career we are choosing a way of life you know how we are going to spend our life i'm going to spend my life as a doctor i'm going to uh, spend my life as a lawyer do i really like the kind of the, the, the work a lawyer does you know so, uh, so uh, they, they... one sec i i'll i'll just uh, you know interrupt you there it's no more called streams the cbse has done away with the streams there are no streams any subject can be picked up and chosen by students and uh, you know he can pick up provided the school has the the facility to uh, provide that uh, so he he or she can do a uh, biology and a mathematics with uh, with history maybe it's mu- much like uh, liberal arts in the universities that's this very important initiative and we appreciate that you know proactive educators like you have uh, you know recognized this and appreciated this but i have one uh, you know uh, 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 one uh, one educator from a tier 3 uh, city or uh, school uh, so uh, she said that you know uh, uh, these these options were already available with cbc curriculum you know uh, but the schools in especially tier 2 tier 3 cities you know they did not have the teachers pool so they generally Agreed. don't encourage students they generally don't encourage students to offer those you know those those kind of courses so that would be a big challenge in fact uh, i really appreciate uh, uh, and many people believe that many points which ha- which are there in the policy are already being implemented in good schools like rotary or you know good delhi schools or good um, uh, bombay school or bangalore but the biggest challenge would be for the uh, village schools or government schools or you know budget schools so uh, that would be a challenge and we certainly need to find solutions and so big thanks once again to all the participants and uh, now the i would request amita ma'am just would like to know if you have uh, you know i know that uh, you have that emergency so if you can uh, you know t- can take few questions uh, i just just would like no, to get I, i would know. like to be excused because as it is i, I was planning understand. to hand i understand uh, otherwise okay, i would have definitely loved to be here and uh, finish up with the question answers but, i understand uh, just, just one one this is my personal question and i i would request if you can you know respond on this you know you also talked about that universalization of primary school education you know a lot of educators a lot of speakers have talked about it 
so i really wonder so what would happen to these pre schools you know which are there in the unorganized uh, areas so uh, what are your assessment so what would happen to those pre schools are they going to uh, exist or they would uh, vanish so it is very early to comment on anything which is still in the you know not uh, not started being you know utilized and started being used in the schools and in the educational areas however uh, they were always a, you know a kind of uh, an eye sore so to say the pre primary schools because uh, public schools and private schools always had uh, a section where they used to have a play group they used to have a nursery they used to have a lkg ukg so whatever the play schools have these sections only they have the play group the lkg uh, the nursery lkg ukg max they can have class 1 and 2 also now uh, with uh, most private schools and public schools already having these so parents always thought that it's you know it's easier because the number of seats in the initial first class are definitely more than if they are thinking of putting their child in class 1 or 2 uh, after three classes of that school then they will get only one or two uh, you know vacant seats to uh, send their child to however if they are going in the entry level class which is a nursery maybe where there are 300 seats or 200 seats they have the op, you know option of having 200 seats so they there will be more chances for their child to be admitted in that school so uh, already parents were more keen of putting to put their child in the integrated senior secondary schools for those uh, early initial entry level classes however the the scope of uh, like you know you just said about the luke said about the music uh, fatados so there's always that difference you know so uh, the nurseries the play groups have their own uh, uh, facilities they would have you know maybe about five and uh, children sitting with one teacher who's just singing with them through the day however in an integrated setup there will be lot of other activities happening and the spaces will be used by several other people so those kind of facilities and those those kind of uh, systems which a play group can boast of and can utilize the integrated schools might not and vice versa so uh, i think uh, it would be definitely uh, initially it would be definitely what parents want and how they want uh, then later then later of course the when the nep is completely in into uh, you know is implemented and uh, by 2025 it is uh, expected that it will be implemented uh, because till then it's only these these uh, you know uh, initial things that tasks that have to be finished will be done and the discussions will happen across the table and then these decisions will be taken right absolutely absolutely so big thanks or big thanks amita ma'am and uh... You no, know, you, uh, you you have inspired us, and uh, you know, the, given the circumstances, uh, you still managed to you know take out your time. Big thanks once again. Thank you for joining. So uh, thank you. you. Know, just just what request. Thank yeah. you, and uh, it was a pleasure, Mr. Sunil Nangi and Mr. Luke. It was nice hearing you all, and thank you, uh, Raju Rajul. Uh, and I'm I'm sure I'm not pronouncing your name wrongly. No, no, you are not. You're not. Okay. Uh, so thank you, and my dear teachers and uh, participants. Uh, it was a pleasure to be able to, you know, uh, ignite that little flame of knowledge, uh, which can be shared by you, this side also and that side. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, uh, uh, I would request uh, Sunil ji and uh, 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 Luke, and uh, you know, if you can take on uh, some of the questions. Uh, So, uh, uh, Sunil ji, I would start with you. Uh, so, uh, you know, we this is a very regular question uh, in all of our sessions. You know, uh, how schools are going to uh, manage the integration of vocational uh, education? For example, ten days mandatory training. You know, for students, how would they arrange trainers? Or you know, do we have that number of trainers? You know, who can be provided to all these schools if all schools start implementing that thing? What are your comments? definitely again uh, there is a difference between the, uh, the, the just a policy right execution uh, maybe the solutions it is not easy to find out the solution for the execution but there could be lot of uh, in this session itself i attended a few uh, weeks back so where the uh, one session which was coming up that there could be local people in the surrounding 
those who have been efficient in their field so taking the child to a particular uh, you know it is not possible to take the child to a factory or take a child to the uh, you know in in farms so instead of that if school will be able to call uh, some engineers some doctors maybe and uh, like you I, have you seen like uh, kidsenia kind of thing it's in noida right so if a school can arrange such kind of visit also so it it won't be exact of vocational training because it's very difficult within 10 days internship it is you know very difficult to make someone learn anything so the only thing is that we can show you show the child and uh, i think if a school can either they will have to call someone from outside expert or that field and then just uh, uh, with some gadgets or something they can show it or it can happen that uh, they can take the child in some uh, uh, you know already existing infrastructures like kids in here where a child can learn how to go to the bank or how the courier companies work so that kind of thing is there so till now matlab i i am also confused that it do, will it be a school will be able to implement it effectively or not so uh, that's the only suggestion i can have that either take the kids to like uh, the kidsenia kind of thing or call someone from your neighborhood and that uh, he can uh, tell uh, or show some stories like even even a gardener in the school itself right if a, they can be t- schools uh, if there's a gardener in the school they can take the child to that gardener and ask them to see what he is doing so that kind of thing can be, one need to find a very innovative solution and easy solutions so that right. time consumption is time is basically right. should be there that's all right right uh, in fact uh, you know there is a question uh, you know uh, like from miss anita nandal who is a vice principal with rotary public school gurugram anita ji has asked are there any government subsidies or resources available for outsourcing vocational course teaching for schools so anita ma'am under the regime of our prime minister uh, modi ji you know we should expect that uh, existing uh, subsidies will uh, you know will will vanish very soon so we won't we cannot expect the, the new subsidies number one number two uh, you know uh, certainly government government uh, the biggest support government can provide the itis which are available you know in the nearby areas so they have uh, they have uh, this is government have said on record that you know they have their laboratories they have their resources you know, their teachers or their students in fact so they can come to school and but school has to make the coordination part so that would be an important thing and also uh, you know how we utilize our the pool of our parents you know our parents you know one school which has 1000 parents you know so you have you may have a uh, 1000 uh, people with uh, let's say uh, 300 different kind of skill set you know uh, and and a group like the rotary so you have a network of i would say a uh, thousands of skill you know if if we can coordinate and utilize so a uh, parents pool would be very important and alumni pool you know so school would be would would be uh, would need to be more proactive uh, in utilizing those resources so uh, luke i would request if you can take on this one uh, so uh, you know you are an expert on this uh, and you have been working for decades in, in this field so how do you how do you perceive uh, that art education would get evolved luke in coming time with the implementation of this policy yeah thank you very much on this <clears throat> so because of uh, these new reforms about trying to ensure that uh, vocational courses are going to get enough uh, expertise enough of importance uh, is what i mean uh, it will also mean that teachers who are coming over here <clears throat> should definitely be a little more trained in what they are doing because now uh, you know because the arts is going to be a little more important your teacher your let's say your music and your art teacher is not going to be sitting in the in one corner of your school and uh, you know nobody knows what's happening over there and uh, you know the, the principal or the headmistress just comes and sees okay what's happening over there and you know he or she just gives some excuse ha ha you know they are doing this so it is definitely going to mean a lot more which means that the teacher needs to be a lot more equipped to raise the standard of his teaching to a level where uh, now he's going to be responsible for a student who is going to be uh, probably probably uh, taking his taking his class with the point of view that you know what i might want to take music or art as a as my future life career so now the responsibility on the teacher definitely has become a lot lot more 
because of this uh, sudden importance being given to the vocational courses the teacher needs to get trained the school leaders and uh, the principals uh, they all need to ensure that you know the training becomes a lot more robust because you cannot have you cannot have unqualified teachers still you know in their old in their old ways of teaching okay and still continue to teach music and art in a way which is you know just for entertainment that entertainment factor is not going to be there anymore now is going to be like serious business and uh, plus this is also going to ensure because now investors are seeing that okay the government has only gone and uh, you know they want to include uh, they want to include uh, vocation studies uh, you know as an important part this will mean that investors and sponsors will also start looking at it in, with a slightly more imp- with, with a little more confidence there will be more inflow of income institutions like ours institutions like ours and you know other art institutions over there will have more to contribute to a school so in the years to come the ownership and the responsibility for the the stakeholders are going to increase a little more especially in terms of the arts so your art teacher studying or teaching in your school definitely will need to start getting trained a lot more and this is what we foresee in the next 5 to 6 years right right so thank you uh, luke uh, uh, you know most of the question we have received that are uh, you know from the academic side i would request all the participants you know um, we would open the floor here so if you can uh, you have some question uh, from mr sunil dangi uh, you know related to that career counseling platform or from mr luke macedo you know uh, uh, about that art education or music education and how you know the music career so i would request uh, if you, can, you 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 want to ask any question you can unmute yourself and you can ask that question directly otherwise uh, you know the the time to end the session so anyone if you want to ask the question you can unmute yourself and you can raise that question directly to the uh, either sunil ji or uh, mr luke or you can also uh, type the question in the chat box i believe unmuting is a easier option than uh, typing right so um right so uh time time to uh, conclude the session a uh, big thanks to all the participants and uh, our key speakers uh, sunil ji and uh, luke ji and uh, i i would request if you can have your concluding remarks uh, when we close the session mr sunil uh rajul i was uh, just uh, one thing that uh, uh, what uh, we were uh, discussing that uh, it has become the it has been written in the fundamental principle of the education policy that uh, and it's the first one the first statement which has been written in uh, uh, the you know I, in the uh, bold letters recognizing identifying and fostering the unique capability of each student by the by standardizing teacher as well as parents to promote each student holistic development in both academic and non academic sphere so as you are saying that it has been brought in the responsibility of the school through this education policy that they have to take care of the child or t- they need to develop the child even after schools what they'll be doing because you know there is no continuum in schools and after schools and then job right so th- to keep that continuity there and uh, for that that has been very well taken into consideration while developing this education policy and that's the first fundamental principle of the policy that's uh, i really appreciate uh, that uh, the that they have mentioned this thing again uh,